to be agreeable or to not be agreeable? That is the question. So in this video series, we're talking about the big five personality traits. If you want more information about what the big five personality traits are, go to see my previous video on conscientiousness. That's where I start the videos. Today, we're going to be talking about agreeable versus disagreeable personality types. So if you like this information, like button, subscribe button, notification bell, comment below if you have any more questions or comments regarding my uh, videos, or if you'd like to see me cover a video about something else. So in this series, we're trying to do a deep dive into the different personality types. So yeah, let's get started. So agreeable versus disagreeable is actually one of the more fascinating personality traits in my opinion. And that's because most of the time when you think of agreeable people, you think of polite, kind, loving people and people that you would aspire to be. However, agreeableness is not generally associated with success in say the business world or with capitalism. It's more the disagreeable people that are not willing to settle or to make compromises for what they want. That see more success. Just like neuroticism and conscientiousness and open-minded versus closed-mindedness, each of these things, they have their positive elements and they also have their negative elements. Uh, most people lie in the middle of these spectrums, but often it's more fun to create characters that really land on one side or the other of the spectrum. What are the characteristics of an agreeable person? An agreeable person is generally thought of to be kind, polite, and really collaborative. The agreeable person would rather see themselves sacrificed than to see the falling of other people. Now this can be very helpful, especially in say a parent, like a mother. If that infant cries, they're not going to say, well, you know, I've got other things to do. No, they're going to go to that infant and they're going to sacrifice themselves in order to take care of that infant. However, with people who are very high in agreeableness and cannot stand up for themselves, they often become victims of abuse and are dominated by their partners. They are also just mistreated in general by people that are more disagreeable themselves and will look to seek to take advantage of them. So what is a disagreeable person? Well, basically a disagreeable person is at the opposite end of the spectrum of an agreeable person. These people come across as harsh or rude or cold. They know what they want and they're not going to sacrifice themselves to get it. But now at the far end of the spectrum, most of those people end up in jail. But if they are somehow able Able to follow the rules of polite society, then they can often end up as heads of CEOs of companies, people in high entrepreneurial statuses. It's basically while all of their agreeable counterparts have kind of settled for a happy collaborative operation, these people are go-getters and they're not going to stop and they're going to keep going and they're not going to take no for an answer. So those are kind of the two sides of this personality trait as well as their pros and their cons. Most people fall somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. They're neither very disagreeable nor very agreeable. All right, now as for myself, I I have a very agreeable personality, or at least I really did more so when I was younger. Uh, I'm a registered nurse and I worked at the hospital for several years. A lot of nurses are very agreeable people. And if you think about it, it makes sense why an agreeable person would choose that role. It's a very sacrificing role. You're an advocate for your patient. You're doing all these, these things that you're wiping people's butts, all right? You have to be pretty humble in order to do that. But the problem with this personality trait is if you're overly agreeable, there are people out there that will pounce on you. For example, in the world of nursing, I found that a lot of my employers would require their nurses to work ungodly hours. And there was always a nursing shortage and they're always in trouble and hurting for people. And you always had to be cutting your break short or not getting a break at all. 12 hour shifts, sometimes 13, 14 hour shifts with no breaks. There are five universities in my town that are churning out nursing students, about 150 classes per school. And there was still a nursing shortage in the area. It was due to burnout. You were expected to be abused verbally, sometimes physically by your patients. Nurses are hit often and they don't file police reports because their patients are confused or they didn't understand or, or whatever. But nursing is one of the most violent and physically abusive careers out there because these agreeable people are just so, so kind. They would rather sacrifice themselves for someone else and it's not healthy. All right, so to make matters worse, these agreeable martyrs would become managers and any of the other people that were complaining about the high workload or the unsafe patient to nurse ratios, these agreeable people would be like, well, I was a martyr. I did it. I've been in the heavy lifting. You need to be part of the team. So if you want to take off an agreeable person, you want to see them sort of flip almost like they're a disagreeable person, act like you're not part of the team and all that good natured, kind hearted politeness. Yeah, it goes away. But that's part of the agreeable personality because it's kind of that mama bear, the patients are the cubs and yada, yada, yada. And you do anything you sacrifice on their behalf. That's what good people do. Whereas a healthy, disagreeable person who just wants to not have a coronary event at age 50 
says no, agreeable people will pounce on you. So with this information in mind, I wrote my novel Surviving Midas and I created my two main characters, one being my disagreeable 17 year old boy named Jared. He has trouble with his interpersonal relationships. He has trouble getting along with people, but also this sort of disagreeable attitude has helped him survive. And then I have my other main character, Katie, who is very agreeable in nature. And then I threw them into a trunk together and let them figure out their differences. So Katie is a very kind hearted. She's very polite, but she's also a bit naive. And she's very protective of people that she views as weak or vulnerable. Jared, however, is more pragmatic about his approach to problems and people. That brings on Katie's scorn pretty quick. Both of them love fiercely and both of them are loyal but their personalities are very different and it's manifested in different ways. So this is just something to keep in mind when you're writing about your characters. What are their personalities? Where do they land on these spectrums? I want you to go ahead and tell me about your characters in the comments below. Are they agreeable? Are they disagreeable? Are they conscientious? Are they not so conscientious? Show me what that looks like. If a bully comes and demands food off their plate, do they give it over willingly or do they stand up and fight? Or if somebody insults them, even with a minor insult, do they get their fist ready and tell them to take it outside? or do they just kind of turn the other cheek? Really figure out these characters and then stay true to them. When I was writing Surviving Midas, there was this one scene where Jared and Katie came across, not really a bully, but he was a very powerful character. And I thought for a while, you know, I was gonna make Jared stand down. This boy's bigger than him. He's trying to make friends, make him more diplomatic, but it just didn't seem to fit with his personality. And you know what? I made him disagreeable and I made him stand up to this guy and it made the scene far more interesting than if I had just kind of let him let them chill out. So really stay true to your character's personality traits and really figure out what is my character like? What would they do in this situation? What would they do in that situation? If you can kind of figure that out, it'll make your characters far more realistic and interesting to read about. But this is the agreeable versus disagreeable personality traits in a nutshell. If you like this video, you found it useful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell, so you never miss another video. And I hope to see you next time.